Now on BBC Two, Midlands Report follows the make-or-break season for Hereford United Football Club. It's the beginning of August at the Edgar Street Stadium and Hereford United are holding an open day. It's a chance to raise badly needed money and for fans to meet the new players they hope will bring them success. Optimism is high. I put my foot on that 20 pence, can't afford to lose that, thanks very much indeed. <laughs> it was a big disappointment for us to go out the league, I mean we were there at the Brighton game and it was absolutely devastating, course, but yeah. uh, last season we, we bounced back but unfortunately we didn't and we've virtually changed the team for this season. Relegation from the Football League 18 months ago and debts of over a million pounds could have spelt the end. Events like this though have kept the club going. There was certainly a lot of time last year when it looked like we wouldn't get to the start of the season this year. That was, that was, we're all relieved really to still be here. Now we've got to work on pulling it round long term. It's not going to be like this forever, you know. Now it's got a clean sweep now, and I think we got go ahead board, and I'm sure this club is going to go back in the football league and do go to better things. You can pick your friends and you can pick your enemies, but once you've got your football team, that's it. You know, you're stuck with it with life. You had to go or anything yet? Not really. I'm in the cheerleaders. Oh, you're in the cheerleaders. The former Aston Villa and Wolves manager Graham Turner has now stepped in to run the club as majority shareholder. We've survived. We're keeping our head above water at the moment, but it's it's with difficulty. Uh, the one thing about it is that there's a great deal of optimism about the place. When we got relegated, I mean, the word, you know, it was a terrible feeling, but the fans were absolutely fantastic. They all rallied round and got behind the club. And as long as that can continue, there will. They'll always be a Hereford United. That's our motto, our greatest glory lies, not in yeah. ever having fallen, but in rising when we yeah. fall. Yeah. <laughs> the season's first league game is away at Kingstonian, and the supporters have organised two coaches to follow their team. However, they've already hit problems. Heavy traffic just a few miles from London, and it looks like they'll miss the kick-off. Yeah, I mean, we're never going to make three o'clock. Is there any way the referee can be... Uh can be told about this and uh, you've got you've got at least 150 people still still due to turn up at yet uh, all a bit distressed and anguished we're going to be late we're going to be late getting home yeah. cheers shall see you in a minute 3.15 kick off <laughs> Hereford regularly take two to three hundred supporters away from home more than most other sides in the conference unfortunately they arrive just as Kingstonians score Already, some pragmatic Hereford supporters believe they may have to forget about success on the pitch and concentrate on financial survival. At the end of the day, you know, it's far better to end up halfway down the league than top of the country. Sure enough, at full time, the score is 2-0 to Hereford's opponents, who've just been promoted from a lower division. Hardly a good start to United's season. I spent all, all my wages on this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to go. It's always next week. Yeah, well, we'll be there on Tuesday. Next time. We play Hereford United Football Club. The following Saturday, the Independent Supporters Association gathers before the game for its AGM. Members discuss the thousands of pounds they collected last year to keep the club going. From scratch, we raised £20,000. We donated £10,000 to the club. Things got so bad at the end of the season, we used to pay for team coaches to get the team to the game. On top of this, in the background, we removed the old board. The club's previous board borrowed half a million pounds from the Bristol Stadium Group, who could foreclose on the loan in May 1999. The supporters believe they have to raise money fast. So the overall raised £350,000 with which to in 12, months, over, right? in 12 months to keep their overdraft. Well, why don't we? So we've got to have our own message that this date is still very, very important. Victory at the game afterwards, though, gives them something to cheer about. A lot of stick off our friends at school because all of them just support Man United, Liverpool, Aston Villa. None of them really support Hereford. Yeah, it's true actually because there's a few. My brother supports Hereford as well, and a lot of his mates give me and my brother stick. But 
they just carry on coming down and they don't really care. Hereford are relying on a man who spent his career managing Midlands clubs. 11 years at Shrewsbury Town, a spell at Villa, and then to Wolves, whom Graham Turner took from the fourth to what's now the first division. When appointed at Hereford in 1995, it was hoped he'd do the same there. People will look at the situation here and wonder why I've come to Hereford. I think that Hereford, along with a lot of clubs in the lower reaches, are capable of, of far better things. And I'm sure that you know, Hereford themselves are capable of, of perhaps reaching and, and maintaining first division football. At first, things went well, drawing with Tottenham in the FA Cup and getting into the third division promotion playoffs. But the next season was a disaster. After 25 years in the Football League, Hereford were relegated to the conference after failing to beat Brighton in the last match of the season. Hereford are out of the Football League. Brighton has survived. That was the, the lowest point of Hereford's history and, and my career in football. Been in it a long time, but without a shadow of a doubt, that feeling on relegation day was absolutely incredible. Uh, I think it brought home to everybody just how much the people of, of the city, the supporters, care about the football team. I've never seen so many grown men crying. Turner blamed relegation on the club's financial problems, and so this summer stepped in with his own money, becoming chairman and majority shareholder. Bad news for his wife when he said um, we're going to have to invest uh, in the football club I thought of um, saw this kitchen disappearing before my eyes um, but true to his word we eventually did get it started how did you feel when Graham took on what was after all a much more stressful role within the club than just being the manager I think numb is the word when he came home and said that he said he's spoken of a, a moment of madness I think it was longer than that that he was mad <laughs> Um, but I was proud of him that he was willing to, to try and do it. There's little money about at Telford when Hereford play them on a rainy September evening. But at least there's a goal. And at half time, the fans are even able to change ends. It's a lot better than it was last season, you know? Dean Williams got his hand to it, couldn't help it. Back of the net, Hereford taking a deserved lead. They've been the superior side in this first half. One goal was enough as Hereford recorded their second away win in four days. I'm not quite sure what Williams did in this. I'm saying he bundled the ball against the bar. And yeah. That's a lack of his multitude, isn't yeah. it? Hereford has lots of devoted supporters, but few can beat Mike Quarrell, who regularly flies in from his home in Germany. I uh, managed to get to my bed this morning at about four o'clock, I think, uh, European time, uh, when the alarm went off, and uh, I then have to drive uh, about 130 miles uh, from Bielefeld, where I live, to Dusseldorf, and then I catch the 8.20, I think it is, from Dusseldorf, which gets into Birmingham at about nine o'clock. I do it because I can't stand Saturday afternoons in front of the TV watching the teletext, threatening to put my foot through uh, the screen or the, or the screen through the window. And I'd rather be in Harrison than anywhere else on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Mike spends hundreds of pounds on flights and hire cars, rarely missing a game or a chance to promote Hereford. As you're a regular customer, you're just getting a regular deal. The money I should save, I should donate to Hereford and the football club because they need every penny they can get. <laughs> You bloody premiership supporters, you see, you don't appreciate it. You are millions of pounds, and probably what you pay your centre forward will keep us going for the whole year. The May the 3rd uh, game against uh, Brighton was quite possibly the worst day in my life, and, and certainly I'll never ever forget it. Um, but you, you carry on in the, in the hope that um, eventually things will turn around and um, uh, we'll have the degree of success, or some degree of success, I think that uh, uh, our supporters deserve. There isn't a better group of uh, more loyal and dedicated supporters. September the 19th, and Morecambe at home. We'll win today, we'll win today. Three points, yeah, two goals. nil today. But we definitely need to sign somebody else up front. And with a penalty awarded to United, things are looking good. Time to get behind the team.
Boys. Eh? You said 2-0. 2-0. I said that there to you. 2-0. 2-0. What a great result. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes, we'll be there. Come on, Rushton. We're coming yeah. next week, guys. And even conference players have their admirers. No, it's the lip. Just a spin image. I'm sorry. So have you got any favourite players? Gavin Williams and Gary Fick. Andy Quay. He's such a sweetie. <laughs> Gary Williams is nicer. And we ate Buster. Russian and Diamonds away. And a chance for an American visitor to learn of the finer points of football rivalries. Especially when the team you're taking on now has your former centre forward playing for them. He left here. Yeah. Deserted us when we needed him most of all. This year? No. No, when we got to, to like relegated. I hope it's a little bit nicer than Street. I'll give it that. Yes, it's a bunch of solid ground that we can do with in the future. Nen Park in Northamptonshire costs more than £10 million to develop, a world away from Edgar Street. Supporters Stan Tippins and Mike Worthing have a chance to take in the splendid surroundings. Yeah, beautiful, aren't they? I would have thought um, we're probably going to bring a bit of each other, don't we? Yeah, it's the best ground in non league football. Um, the facilities here are absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of league clubs that are kill for a ground like this and the backing that um, Russian have got off, Max Griggs. And, you know, I mean, they're full-time, they've got something like 30 full-time professionals. And, I mean, they're the favourites to win the conference this year. And I think if we can get a point today, then we'll do well. The reviled Foster wears the number nine shirt for Russian Diamonds. The Hereford squad is made up of experienced players nearing the end of their careers, free transfer signings and talented youngsters. This season, some of the players will be sold to keep the club afloat, but only the sale of the club's ground will actually solve the financial problems. The million pound is owed to developers. That will be repaid if and when Edgar Street is developed. To do that, we've got to rely heavily on the local authority. If we can get that sorted out, then I believe the club has got a bright future. It's just something that I want to see through now. And if um, in doing that I can get the club back into the league, see it relocated to, to a nice new stadium, uh, I might be remembered for that rather than relegation. We have to move away. We have to, because we've been set up. Unlike the old board, Graham Turner and the club's secretary, Joan Fennessy, have agreed to discuss the club's problems with the fans. The city's MP, Paul Keach, and two local councillors have been invited. And if we want a new grand for Herefords United as part and parcel of a new Herefordshire stadium, then I think we should actually try and find one. The council will have the final say on what happens to the site. Hereford United, in my opinion, is the biggest marketing machine for Hereford. For this county, even Hereford and Worcester, have ever had. Every year the FA Cup can rank. What's mentioned? Ronnie Radford, Hereford. Newcastle played Stevenage last year. What was mentioned? Hereford United. Surely you should say, Hereford United, let's help take them forward and let's do it by ourselves. Let's look for this new. We can stay here. Even though everybody wants to, you know, that guy you remember for Ronnie Radford screaming, <coughs> it's gone now, we've got to go, and you've got to help we, us find a stadium. I, don't, I don't think we disagree with you at all. There are 15,000 people in this ground, it's packed to capacity, a lot of people without tickets and that's just one of them. 1972, the FA Cup game against Newcastle for which Edgar Street will always be famous. Well here we go, here's the goal of the century, goal Hereford United fans won't forget. Lays it off now, great shot. 
No goalkeeper in the world would have stopped it. Absolutely wild. And here's all the youngsters coming on. I was 17 at the time. And so I was at the back with all the singing. And after the uh, melee dies down, I find myself down the front. Great days. I'll ne I will never, ever forget that day. Never, ever forget it. And I'm, I'm really hoping that after the last few years we've been through as Hereford fans, we can have some of them days back again, because it was wonderful. The town was buzzing. Everywhere was buzzing. It was absolutely fantastic. Here he goes. Never tire of seeing that one. That's one goal we never tire. In there somewhere, singing away. All with our parkers on. More than 25 years later, and Joan, the club's secretary, is banking on a good FA Cup run this year to bring in some much-needed money. It's one! Hugs! 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 the first, the first of many. Oh! <laughs> Joan's had a career at the club for 20 Good years. Keeper. I started part, very part-time, two mornings a week. Um, doing the accounts for the commercial department. Staff leave, you move into their place, you become from a clerk to assistant secretary, then you're offered secretary's post. And then, well, the final stage really from company secretary now to a director. It hasn't been easy, but I've been respected, I think. Where is he now, in the dressing room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> At half time, Joan entertains the directors from the other club, Newport Isle of Wight. As they're two divisions below Hereford, everyone believes the bigger club should win easily. It's all going to plan. 2 0 now to Hereford. The Islanders get a goal back, but surely it's only a consolation. Despite the tension, Joan has to get on with her duties. Scarcely has she arrived in the boardroom when there's more bad news. Oh, no. You know what this means? This means an expensive oh. return trip to the Isle of Wise, unless someone scores again. What's, what's the plan, Joan? Uh, we aren't even there yet. Come on. You're not going to be there with you. No. No, it's good. Yeah. That's it. I'm not going to be there. I haven't caught a drink set, Chris. Joan has just seen the chance of thousands of pounds for the club disappear. Newport, Isle of Wight celebrate a cup upset and Joan has to entertain the visiting directors. The club's staff are taking in the bad news. We will win the conference. Halifax lost in this round of the FA Cup. But I know we will win the conference now, so don't worry. Don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Not, yeah, Halifax and himself yeah, in the boardroom went out at the same time yeah, last right. year, so we will do what Halifax did. Because I can imagine down there is absolutely suicidal. They haven't come out of the dressing rooms yet. Yeah? Oh, I'm just going I down to the legends. <laughs> they, I'm not well, the last rooms. time they did that bad, the gaffer just didn't say anything to them, apparently. Oh, I don't think that years. is true. I didn't think the last time we'd done that, I don't think any knuckles left. So don't you be any illusions well, about they, that. They were baying for his blood outside after the match. They, um... People in the bar in the bottom, all they all come out, giving it all this. Yeah. Bad. Real bad. When they got to 2 2, we were talking about going for a replay. But when that third goal went in, that was it. We were devastated. My husband said, Surely you are not going to go anymore. And I said, Oh, yes, we can't let them down. A month later, and Len Dykes is preparing his stewards, just some of the 70 people who have to be paid on match days. We're tracking with the bus drivers at the moment to see uh, where they're actually parking or where they're picking their spectators up. 
The plainclothes police officer Ian Moore has warned him that there may be some troublemakers coming to today's game against Doncaster. This level of stewarding is essential if Hereford is ever to go back into the league. But it's like everything else, money. And, uh, we're just waiting for the Mr. Millionaire to uh, come along. Just <laughs> someday out there. <laughs> Because, as I said, what's happened, it's the hidden costs of the football club. It's the stewards, it's the bank regulation staff, it's the office staff, the groundsmen. Even at conference level, good stewarding is vital. The problem is quickly dealt with. Yeah, control to all stewards and senior stewards. Well done. Thanks very much for a good job. Mid-December, and a group of supporters is preparing for its first meeting with the developers who could close the club down. They meet beforehand to discuss tactics. Who are we expecting to appear from the BS group? What's his first name? The concern is the developers could stick to the original May deadline and demand their money back before the club has found a new ground. You're not going to be in a new stadium by May 1999? No, no, no. So no, 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 no. where we can move by May 1999? No. If they close us down in May 1999, what do we do? Well, that really is the That is a big question. The meeting is conducted behind closed doors, but the following day, Joan is confident it went well. The BS group now are the developers who we do owe the loan money to. We've had a meeting with them, with the supporters, and they've come and said they want to help us. They've promised they're going to make a big announcement, which will be to our financial advantage in the new year. So I feel very confident. So, uh, supporters went away very happy that they are going to. They're on our side. They want to help us. However, that success is not equal on the pitch. A win against Kettering before Christmas could have put them in the top three in the conference. Come on then, Nadia, let's go and get a goal. Come on. on. It doesn't happen. I think absolutely pathetic. There's no passion whatsoever in this game at all. I, don't even, I, I can't even believe they actually got the goal to actually go on the on the pitch without every shirt on. They're just not playing for Hereford. Why do we play for Kevin? For once, Mike can't get there and is stuck in Germany oh. watching CFAX. Why is it always the first minute or second at the... <laughs> Only the cheerleaders seem oblivious to the disappointment of a 2-0 defeat. at the supporters' Christmas party, there is cause for some celebration. The promise of better loan terms from the developers. May 1999 really was the crunch date. Um, and hopefully if everything that was said at first is meeting comes to fruition, then we can hopefully look to a future. This season must be the most important season we, we've, we've been facing. The club is 75 years old. We hope we're going to see a 76 year as well. As we come to the end of the year, it appears to be a bit brighter. And uh, we, can, we can look forward to traditional games against Kidderminster with a bit more heart and light. Boxing Day and a trip to rivals Kidderminster Harriers. Now, what you've got to do now is get in your mind between now and kickoff time what you're in the side for, what your position entails, what you've got to do well to get us a win today. It's as simple as that. So make sure you get in your minds what you have got to do. Come on in, let's go, Wicktoon. It comes down to, you know, when we walk back across the car park, how hungry you are. 
How hungry are we? But I need you now to start just to think a bit about responsibility. Bob your head. Bob your head. Yeah. disappointment I mean obviously last week against Kettering and then following up with a performance like this we didn't create enough chances really to win the game over the Christmas period it all fell apart we lost all four matches and uh, we found ourselves now probably looking down the table at the relegation spots rather than upwards from the original squad that began the season a number of key players have had to be sold just to keep the club going to some extent, I'm still involved in the, in the coaching and, and the team, uh, to a far lesser extent than I've ever been in the past. But without doubt, the, I think the financial side has, has been the, uh, the biggest problems that we've had and the, the, has taken up my, my time more than anything else. That could finance that. Turner was at Wolves when their ground was transformed. He's employed the same architect to help Hereford. When you think back to Molyneux, they had classrooms in the back of the, of the one stand that financed to some extent the building of it. So there's no reason why we shouldn't do that. Three possible sites have been identified. The main block would be built first, then the others when finance is allowed. Okay. In football, you don't know what's around the corner. People might have got fed up with me in the next three months and might want me out. And I've said before, it, it, basically it was supporters that were the reason why I stayed. It'll be supporters will be the reason why I go. 